I'm going to close this document uh, and I'm gonna not going to save the changes. And uh, we're going to move on to the type tool. Now the type tool is probably one of the tools you'll use the most in Illustrator. We're going to create a new document. So if you remember to create a new document, you can do Command or Control N. Now, I don't want to create anything complicated. I'm just going to create one artboard and it doesn't matter um, what kind of document it is. I just want a blank document. Now, first, uh, let's select the type tool and um, you can do many things with the type tool. So the first thing you can do is to create area type by dragging a text box on your artboard to add text to. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now, as you can see, um, Illustrator automatically creates or adds placeholder text that you can modify using the options in the control panel. You can also resize the text box uh, by clicking and dragging any of the handles using the selection tool as we saw earlier. Now, when you do that, the text is automatically adjusted to fit within the boundaries. So if I go smaller, bigger, it moves with the box. Now, the text doesn't get resized if the box is too small. So that's why you have this uh, small red square uh, at the bottom, which indicates uh, that there's overset text. The text box has two auto sizing features to fix that. First, below the middle handle is a square. When it's filled in, it means the auto sizing feature is not on. So if you hover over the square, you can see that the pointer changes. And when that happens, you can double click. You've now turned auto sizing on and the box is automatically resized to fix the text. Now, if you delete some text, let's go to the type tool and I'm going to delete this text. Notice how the box is resized automatically. Now you might have not noticed, let me just click the box again. You might have noticed um, a circle on the right side of the text box. That feature allows you to switch from area type to point type. Point type is created by simply clicking anywhere on the artboard without creating a text box. So let me show you. Uh, I select the type tool and if I click anywhere on the artboard, I create what's called point type. And text is simply added um, after uh, horizontally or vertically from the starting point. So I'm going to delete this. Now, uh, going back to our text box, when the circle is filled in, it means you're in area type. If you hover over the circle, the pointer changes. If you double click, it means that you can convert to point type. Now, when you stretch the bounding box, the text stretches with it. If you undo and do the same thing downwards, you get the same, same effect. Now the type tool hides uh, many other options. First, we're going to delete this text. Now, if we go back to the type tool and this time we click and hold the mouse, on the icon, we can see that there's many other options uh, hidden under the, the type tool. So we're going to click on um, type on a path. And now if you click on the artboard, you should get this error message. That's because you actually need to create a path before you can add text to it. Kind of logical. So we're going to click OK. Now to create a simple path, we're just going to select the uh, rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a shape. 
Now I'm going to remove the, uh, I'm just going to make the color white just so it's uh, clear. Right. Now we're going to go back to the, the type tool. So the type on the path tool and we're going to click on the path of the shape. And uh, as you can see, we uh, now have inserted, selected uh, a placeholder text. And if we want, we can start typing any text can be inserted along the path in Illustrator, for example. And I'm just going to copy this text just so you can see. And I'm just going to paste it a few times right there. Now, if you click on the selection tool, you'll notice, let me just get a bit closer. You might notice, uh, you might notice some, some lines appear. These lines are uh, mark the start and the end points of your text. Now, if you want to move the text along the path, you click the line and you drag it to move the text. So let's say I wanted to move the text all the way to start over here. But notice how you get one of those uh, icons that indicates overset text. So the way to fix that is to drag the end line all the way to the end so that your text fits. You can also add text inside a shape. So I'm going to select all. So to do select all, you do command or control A and you delete. Now we're going to click and hold the rectangle tool to reveal other shapes. Uh, and then we're going to select the ellipse tool. We're going to draw a shape. And here again, I'm going to just make it white and I'm going to then go to the uh, type tool. And this time I'm going to select area type tool. Now, if you click on the path of uh, the ellipse, you've created type that is bound by the shape. We're going to undo. And this time we're going to select, again, under the type tool, we're going to select uh, the uh, vertical area type tool. And we're going to click on the, on the path again. Now your text is vertical, but it's still bound by the shape. Now there are many other shapes also hidden under the rectangle tool. So uh, before we do this, we're going to select all again. So Command A or Control A. We're going to delete all this. And we're going to um, select the polygon tool this time. And we're going to um, click on the artboard to select the number of sides. So let's say uh, I want um, eight sides. And we're going to click OK. And you can create a shape um, depending on the number of sides and the radius. Now, I'm going to make this white again so you can see it better. Now, you can double click again to, sh uh, to change the parameters uh, and create a different shape. So if you double click again, you can change the parameters and, uh, you know, create a different shape. So if you wanted to say maybe three and change the radius to 25, you've created a completely different shape. You'll also find uh, the star and flare tools uh, under the rectangle tool that you can adjust in the same way by double clicking. The next tool I want to look at is uh, the pen tool. So I'm going to select all and delete this. Now the pen tool is located uh, right under the um, magic wand. 
The pen tool allows you to draw lines with anchor points that give you a lot of flexibility over the shapes you create. Make sure you have a blank document open and select the pen tool. Because it allows you to draw lines, the control panel shows a number of options to control the thickness of the stroke, uh, the width profile, and the brush definition. When you hover over the, the artboard, you'll see a pointer with an asterisk below it. This indicates that you're about to create an anchor point. Click on your artboard and move the pointer away from the anchor point. The asterisk has disappeared, indicating that you're now creating a path. The line that you're seeing is a preview of the path. It's also called a rubber band. As you move the pointer, a box shows you the distance. If it doesn't, you need to turn Smart Guides on by going into View. Now, if you click again, you create another anchor point. Now, if I grab the selection tool and I click out, uh, the line completely disappears. The reason for that is that lines are ruled by um, strokes. Uh, so if I click this again, if I go select all, I, and if I add a stroke to it, now if I do this, I can see it. Now, you can add as many anchor points um, as you want. So if I go back to this anchor point, and I can add another one, and another one, you can create shapes this way. Now, let's go back to the selection tool and make sure we click out of the shape so that it's not selected. Now, we've already seen how to select paths and anchor points, but what if we wanted to cut one of the paths? To do this, with the direct selection tool, you position it over one of the path segments that you want to cut, and when the pointer changes, go into the uh, edit menu and select cut. You could also use the shortcut command uh, X or control X. Now if you want to redraw that path, click the pen tool again and position it over one of the anchor points that is now an end point. It shows a forward slash indicating that it's ready to continue drawing from that point. Click and move the pointer to the other uh, end anchor point and click again to recreate the missing, seg missing segment. Now we're going to select all and delete. If you want to draw a straight line, click to create an anchor point and then hold the shift key as you draw the path. It's also possible to draw curved lines in Illustrator. Select all and delete again. In the control panel, select no fill. And we're going to select a stroke uh, of one point. Now click on the artboard to create a starting anchor point. Move the pointer away, click and drag. You create a curved path with direction handles. Now click and repeat um, several anchor points and path. Now deselect everything, so escape to get out of this. Deselect everything and uh, then with the direction, direct selection tool, hover over the path uh, until you get to an anchor point. So follow the path, oops, right there, un uh, until you get to an anchor point. Click on it to activate uh, it and its uh, direction handles. And then you can use the handles to refine the curve. So you can, oops, sorry, pan. Then you can use that to adjust. Um, so there's another anchor point here. Oops. Make it 
smoother. So you can keep doing this um, to create uh, perfect curves using the pen tool. Now we're going to select all again and delete. Oops. Delete. Now click an anchor point. Let's go back to the pen tool. Let's click an anchor point. And um, we're going to drag upwards. And we're going to release the mouse button. Then we're going to find a point straight across uh, the initial anchor point. It helps to have smart guides on. And we're going to click. And this time we're going to drag the mouse uh, down downwards and to create a convex uh, curve and then we continue we find another point across and you can see with the distance you can make them equal I'm not gonna try to do that right now but you could do that and you do the same thing and you And you can continue continue that way, uh, going up and down, um, to create as many curves as you want. You can also easily add uh, straight lines to your curves. Simply click and uh, with the pen tool, of course. Simply click one of the end anchor points, and with the pen tool, instead of dragging. You're going to move your mouse to anywhere on your artboard and you're going to click again. Now the pen tool is an incredibly versatile tool and we'll have the chance to use it again during the course. I've shown you how to use a few key tools but there are many others. We'll use some of them later uh, but before we move on to another section I want to show you how to create a custom toolbar. So we're going to Escape, select all, delete. Now, if you go into the window menu and you go into uh, tools and you click new tools panel, uh, you can create a custom toolbar. So uh, give it a name. So I'm going to say, for example, drawing and click OK. And you'll, you're presented with a floating blank bar. Now to populate it, uh, you need to click on any of the current tools. Uh, so let's say I want to uh, drag the pen tool. I can click it and drag it to the new toolbar. Let's say I want this one, uh, this one, this one. So when you're happy with the result, you can uh, close the default um, toolbar. So to do that, you have to drag it out of the, the dock. So you can close it, close it, and then you can move the other um, toolbar in its place. Now, if you go into Window and you go Tools, you can see that the Drawing toolbar is here. If at any time you want to go back to the original toolbar, all you have to do is click on the default toolbar, drag this one out, click it out, then put this one back in its place. Now, uh, you can create many, many uh, distinct or custom toolbars this way. and um, you can use them to uh, do very specific uh, work. Now, if you don't want the drawing toolbar anymore, you can go into um, you can do go into the sorry the Windows Tools panel, and then you can go Manage Tools panels, and you can click on Drawing, and you can simply click the trash icon to get rid of it. Now, creating a custom tools panel that's tailor-made to suit your needs can save you a lot of time in the long run. So you might want to explore that option as you gain more confidence and knowledge with the application. Now it's time to explore another important series of tools in Illustrator, the panels.